दोस्त आई एम सारम खान टुडे बैक विथ अ न्यू टॉपिक एंड टुडे आई विल डिस्क्राइब टू यू एंड डिफाइन टू यू वेल द इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन एंड अबाउट द थ्री इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन एंड वे विल ड्राइव द इक्वेशन ओके वे विल ड्राइव दिस इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन यूजिंग द मैथड ऑफ इंटीग्रेशन सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग टाइम लेट्स स्टार्ट अवर पॉइंट इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन एंड बिफोर डिस्कसिंग ओवर इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन वी नीड टू नो दैट अबाउट वेयर कैन बी इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन यूजफुल generally equations of motion cannot be applied in those situations when we have a non uniform acceleration generally whenever we have any uniform acceleration means the rate of change of velocity is constant then we have then only we can apply the equations of motion since we all know acceleration means the rate of change of velocity of any particle is called the acceleration and if the acceleration is constant means the particle what by what rate the velocity of the particle is getting change that is a constant so we can call then the equations of motion can be valid in that case now what are the equations of motion let us discuss on that point so equations of motion okay first of all v equals to u plus 80 this is known as the first equation of motion v equals to u plus 80 okay it is called the first equation of motion now second we have s is equals to u t plus half 80 square this is called the second equation of motion and the third we have v square equals to u square plus 2a s this is known as the third equation of motion and there does not exist any more than three any equation of motion there are only three equations of motion now here we can see this we know okay let me define those terms to you first of all v is our final velocity u is initial velocity a acceleration and t time now here we can see s is displacement of the particle not distance covered by the particle but what if we have a motion in one dimension then for motion in one dimension if question is given that find out the displacement initial velocity time is given acceleration is given so what how shall we find out the distance so in that case in one dimension always whenever there are two dimensions then not okay three dimensions then not only in motion in one d what will happen this is we know distance covered is equals to displacement covered by any particle so in that case through this formula we can write that the distance covered by the particle equals to displacement of the particle which is this which is equals to ut plus half at square and we'll put the values and finally we'll get our answer now here we can see this is okay so since this is our displacement covered but generally we call it displacement now this is initial velocity time acceleration time is squared this we know now this is final velocity squared is equals to initial velocity squared plus 2 into acceleration into displacement covered of the object this here whichever s you will be seeing those will be for displacement covered by particle not distance covered by the particle okay this we got now let me first of all erase this and after that i will draw the equation using the method of integration okay so first equation of motion v equals to u plus 80 now how to derive this for that we need another equation that is called okay since we all know it is expressing okay the relationship between velocity okay final velocity initial velocity acceleration and time so we need another equation generally we write this equation as generally we can call that a equals to dv by dt since we all know that a equals to dv by dt of course we all know now here we can see implies that when will be doing cross multiplication in this okay when will be doing cross multiplication here nothing is will suppose one one into dv is dv dv is equals to a into dt is a dt dv equals to a dt but this is giving the velocity and this is giving the small part of velocity okay this is v but this is dv so here we need to integrate this function so that will get the value of v so for integrating this side we need to integrate this side also so we'll integrate this side also this we got of course then now what will be our limits of course we have to put a definite integration we have will have to integrate using a definite 
indefinite integration not indefinite integration okay so limits will put imagine since uh, here with respect to dv and here with respect to dt then uh, since we know that imagine at t equals to 0 the uh, velocity of the particle is equals to u at t equals to t the velocity of the particle what is the velocity of the particle <laughs> imagine v equals to v this we got now integrate both sides implies that this will integrate so v minus u is equals to this will integrate so first of all a will come out integral 0 to d t dt implies that v minus u is equals to what this integration first of all a will write its integration t a t okay v minus u equals to a t now this will do now since we know we have to find out the value of only final velocity this will okay send here and when it will go here so it will become positive so it will be added in a t implies that the v is equals to u plus a t final expression we got v is equals to u plus a t In, okay so finally what we can write that the final velocity for any constant constant uniform acceleration final velocity is equals to initial, ve initial velocity plus acceleration into time whatever was our first equation of motion v equals to okay u plus a t and here also v equals to u plus a t means we have already derived our first equation of motion this we got now only what we have to do first equation is drive now let me write here second equation of motion and we'll try your best to drive that okay now let us try okay uh, to drive this second equation of motion then first of all let me write here this second equation of motion that is s is equals to what ut plus half a t square that is the second equation of motion now we have since we know it as expresses the velo uh, relationship between the displacement and the uh, initial velocity time and acceleration so here we need a formula so that formula we can write generally such as we can call that to, we need a formula of velocity what is the formula of velocity instantaneous velocity not the average velocity instantaneous velocity dx by dt so why it happens dx by dt because since we know we need at at the time t so at an instant we need this is why it's differentiation we do that if we'll do the differentiation of x by t so that okay of, of x with respect to t is the dx by dt then of course we'll get the instant ds velocity so dx by dt v equals to dx by dt cross multiplication let us try okay but okay so implies that now dx will do since here nothing is one will suppose e is equals to v dt this we got of course but here since we say that here it is s so so you can also write here ds or you can also write here dx so since here is s then let me write here s or if you also want then you can also write here dx because since we know that x and s both represent the displacement so here but even then s let me write because here s i have written okay so ds is equals to what v dt ds is equals to v dt we need the value of s not ds integrate again both sides because since we know when we'll integrate this to make it s then here also integration will done just like if i'm multiplying from this side from 5 then here also by 5 it will be multiplied this is why if i'm integrating here then here also it will be done here we'll do with respect to ds here with respect to dt so at t equals to 0 at t equals to 0 suppose displacement is 0 of course at t equals to 0 displacement is always 0 now here uh, suppose at t equals to t the displacement is s so s is equals to s implies that here this will be solving so value just put s in this s we got is equals to what now what we have to do so integral okay 0 to t now only what you have to do so uh, since we know when will be so this will come out now here what we have to do so or if you integrate this also vt will get so that's not so how we'll get our this that so okay this question arises so only what we have to do at the place of v just uh, okay only what we have to do since only at the place of v just plot u plus at why u plus at first equation of motion 
it states that v equals to u plus a t first equation of motion this was the first equation of motion and if we put in this okay if at the place of v you can put u plus a t so what's the problem same value will be getting so only just put here u plus a t u plus a t okay now dot dt this we got of course now which is equals to what here bracket we can put u plus a t so this will be getting u t plus now here what we have half a t is square so why half a t is square so only first of all to explain first of all let me write here well so first of all here a t is present with respect to dt we are uh, integrating so here is square will come okay and divided by so here since power was 1 so 1 plus 1 is 2 divided by 1 plus 1 which is equals to 2 a t square by 2 this we got now here nothing is so uh, now dt will uh, go now here no need to write now integration of 0 to t integration of 0 t, uh, to t now this will solve finally we'll get first value of t will put at the place of t so ut plus uh, a t square divided by 2 now minus u into 0 plus a t okay a into 0 square divided by 2 so that will value since we know when we'll be putting 0 in this equation at the place of t so 0 will come and this minus 0 is the same so here but so here we can write which is equals to what ut plus now from where here half came because if we multiply 1 by 2 in 80 square so 80 square by 2 will come half let us write half 80 square so final what we got ut plus half 80 square implies that here s was so implies that s is equals to ut plus half 80 square this is our final expression okay so second equation of motion we got since we know it was ut plus half a t square s is equals to ut plus half a t square here we derived it s is equals to ut plus half a t square so it becomes very simple now now we have already derived the second equation of motion now let's move to the third equation of motion okay so now let us move to our okay third equation of motion so let me first of all write here third equation of motion so since we know that v square equals to u square plus 2as this is our third equation of motion okay then this is our third equation of motion then now only what we have to do what formula we need in this so for this since we know we require any formula so from here we will start driving and maybe up to here will be going so first of all the main formula will be same okay since we know a is equals to what a is equals to uh, since we know dv by dt a equals to dv by dt what if we multiply up and down dx into dx by dx so what will happen since we know dx by dx it will be cancelled each in one time so what will happen what finally will get okay so same value will come so value will not change here let me write s because again here all s i, s I am writing so i am forgetting so s into ds by ds we are multiplying then here multiply it now you will say okay then same answer will come dv by dt but here little in slightly slightly different way we have to think imagine what is this quantity called ds by dt what is it called okay since we know it is called the velocity then which is equals to v dv by ds v dv by ds so by this what we are getting a equals to v dv by ds implies that the a is equals to v dv by ds now implies that now if we are doing cross multiplication in this since we know it is based on v square so here v we need so v dv is equals to what here nothing was one will suppose so one into v dv is v dv is equals to what a d s this we are getting v dv equals to a d s now we now integrate both sides okay we have to remove dv and ds so integrate both sides here he, this side with respect to dv and this side with respect to ds this we got now here what we have to do limits will apply at okay since we know that imagine when displacement is zero okay when displacement is zero then suppose that the velocity is u when displacement becomes s s is equals to s then v equals to v this we are imagining of course now according to this we'll be solving here so according to this first of all this will evaluate so what will come v square minus by 2 minus 
here u is so u square by 2 since we know we are integrating this is why square ka came divided by 2 is equals to what this will integrate so a is constant outside will put now a integral okay is 0 to s ds so its value will what what will it come that is as so as value came of course it came implies that now can 2 v square by 2 minus u square by 2 can we write such v square minus u square divided by 2 of course we have also studied in our earlier classes such as in fifth class those things are taught that when okay how to miss whenever the signs of denominator are same means the same numbers are given in denominator so we take the denominator common of course so which is equals to what this as given now only what we have to do what if okay what if we do cross multiplication in this here nothing is we will suppose 1 1 into this is this and 2 into as is 2 as implies that the v square minus u square is equals to 2 as v square minus u square equals to 2 as now if we try to send this u square here here it was negative here it will become positive and it will be added implies that the v square equals to u square plus 2 a s and this we got our final expression that is the last ex given equation in this whole video and that is v square equals to u square plus 2 s and here since we know that that already we have v square equals to u square plus 2 s so we have already okay done this that is v equals to u plus 80 its derivation and then s equals to 80 plus u t plus half 80 square and finally we did the derivation or use the integration method means integral calculus method of the equation v square equals to u square plus 2 is that's derivation is here so this was my today's topic based on the three equations of motion and the derivation of the three equations of motion using the method of integration thank you